Hey everyone, welcome to Kopi Cafe. This is episode 77. Just kidding, that was last week. It's episode 78 of Kopi Cafe. Uh, last week we had a special guest on seven, so that was pretty cool. And that's just a little throwback to last week. If you haven't seen that episode, please go check it out. Uh, we got some fun stuff coming up ahead for you today. Rob Gregg here, co CEO, Josh Jones, and uh, before we go too much further, if you don't know who Cornucopius is, or what we're building, let me just give you a quick heads up on the game. So Cornucopius is a cutting edge MMORPG set in a world where humanity has ascended from the Earth's surface and created a breathtaking new world in the sky. This fantastical realm is a, is a system of floating islands carved from the land we once called home now encased in radically advanced dome-shaped structures suspended high above the clouds. Each one is a futuristic marvel with its own unique environment, identity, and thriving communities. It is within these domes the epic journey begins. Here, players take control of their own personal avatar, which gives them the freedom to choose their destiny, be immersed in vast landscapes, explore vibrant settlements, and engage in a myriad of activities such as crafting, commerce, combat, racing, and more. Welcome to a world where the sky is no longer the limit. All right. Whoa, David. David's here. Hey there. Okay, I wasn't quite ready <laughs> for that, but hey, let's. it's, it's good to have you. It's good to have you, you <laughs> sneaky, sneaky Kopi Cafe. He's, he's pranking us. Just kidding. I'm here every playing. episode, actually. You just don't see <laughs> He's <You're> here. <laughs> it's good to have you on the show today. Um, this was actually planned. We wanted to bring David up and have uh, just a little variety for you guys. So uh, we're going to be going over a few fun things before we get to our drinks and what everybody's drinking. We're going to cover uh, the player identity tags sale. That's going to be coming out soon. Uh, so fun stuff there. Um, that's not going to be a one day event. That'll be an all ongoing kind of thing. We're going to be talking about the new build, uh, which is coming out, the node sale, uh, some updates on that. And uh, then we got uh, quite a few questions we'll go through with David uh, from the community over time. And uh, we'll just try to flesh out a little bit more, get you guys some more information to chew on. Rob, mm. what are you drinking today? So today I'm going for an old favorite. Fanta. <laughs> Fanta. Okay. Do you have any orange glasses to wear with the Fanta when you're... No. Any orange glasses? No. No, I've got the yellow ones just up here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I should get some orange ones. What are you drinking, Josh? Uh, I'm sorry to lack variety, but huh? not a lot of sleep last night means extra coffee today. So what about uh, you, David? Cold brew. Vitamin water. But the name of this one is called Triple X, and I have no idea why. <laughs> Triple <laughs> so, X. No. Triple X. Who makes yeah. it? Uh, Vitamin water. Oh, no. Was it delivered? <laughs> was it delivered in a? LLC. Was it delivered like, in a diesel van? Don't know. Oh, gla glass shoe? Gla I don't know. It's made okay, by somebody. So the real question Blackout? is: Is Triple X related to the vitamin content? Is it like extra juice, extra energy? What? I mean, it's like a Cy blueberry pomegranate, but it's it's literally has triple X on here, and the other ones don't. I think that's the flavor is it's triple X. So <laughs> okay, I mean, we could All carry right, on, on, but we might have to start blurring some of the content out. Yeah, hey, if Who this is what one? fuels your creative content and your mind, um, I'm going to start drinking that because you 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 yes. do. You do a, a wonderful job of creating. I can't wait to Thank get you. more into the creative side of my role. A lot of times Rob and I get bogged down with running the company and things of that nature. And uh, we do like to get into the creative mode a little mm -hmm. more frequently, but let's go ahead and kick <sighs> this off. So um, we, everybody's got their bevs. We can, we can start it up. So player identity sale is what I mentioned earlier. Uh, gamer tags, you could call them. We haven't branded ours. We don't have a f an official name for ours yet. And I think the reason for that is that we have a lot of added utility ideas 
for them in the future. But the tech is built out, uh, and this is not going to be a player-owned asset uh, or NFT starting off. It will be in the future. But first off, what we wanted to do is start prepping our our website and our tech for mainstream mainstream gamers uh, who are not going to have a crypto wallet and be able to participate in that yet. Now, we obviously don't have mainstream gamers yet that uh, at least we haven't done any intentional marketing for that. But we're trying to start preparing for when that tidal wave uh, does get to to be open. So I'm excited about it. Jeff just showed us, Rob and I, uh, right prior to this uh, filming, the the tech. And I think it is look, it's looking pretty slick. It's pretty cool. Yep. I mean, they'll be completely optional. You don't need one. By the moment when you're in game, you have your tag your, and then you have hashtag and, and loads of numbers so what this will do at a basic level it will get rid of those numbers it will have something else to do with it so so it'll stand out but you will also then be able to i mean there's so the i mean the, the use case for them which is why we had to build our own we, we know there's others that we could use but we had to build our own so you'll be able to attach them to all kinds of things in 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 the future so you your vehicles, um, your land plots, your domes, it'll make things searchable. There's there's about 20 different use cases that we've got penned at the moment, but but they yeah. just tend to grow all, all the time. So so the, there's a definite need for them. Yeah, and you and I had a, a good idea session on the utility of these. I feel like it's been a year now. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so it's we were, easily been a year in the planet. Yeah, yeah, we were hoping to be uh, ready quite a bit sooner, but, you know, the na the nature of the business is you allocate resources where you can, and some things take priority over others, and some things often take longer than you expect. So we're excited to be finally at the stage where we get to open this up uh, to everybody. So that's coming very soon. Um, I'm It'll not going to get a date, cheap. but very soon. We, very, we very had, cheap. We did have a lot of voting and a lot of um, back and forth on that. We even needed to, to survey the team uh, and get some feedback. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, eventually we'll start bringing uh, more, more and more surveys to the community as well. Uh, but yeah, that's yeah, I mean, um, they're, they're very subjective. Some people are really, you know, really want to own the, their own identity. Others are, are not too fussed. But, um, yeah, it was an interesting survey, internal survey, and it changed my mind on on some of the areas we wanted to go with it mm -hmm. so that was fine it's a democracy yeah yeah uh well i i don't think you you left too much out of what you you wanted for it because there is no. stuff to come in the future it's just more of a timing thing uh for how we initially present it um mm -hmm. okay the uh next up is the new build we can get david into the discussion here a little bit mm -hmm. um so before I uh, turn it over to you on this one, David, let me just say that we're, we're at a point now where we've decided to have a build cadence of once a month, uh, where you're targeting a new release once a month. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But one thing that this does do is it allows us to tie marketing processes around the new game releases, which is great. So the marketing team has been revising their processes to be able to really communicate on a regular basis um, to everyone that, you know, how quickly and how effectively Cornucopius is doing in, in terms of what we're building and bringing on each new month. And, you know, some months it, it may be less exciting than others. Uh, and some months might have a lot of stuff that comes to fruition right at once. And it's like a huge release, but regardless of the, the net effect there of, based upon workflows, we're always building and always bringing out new new releases with new bug fixes and sometimes new content, things of that nature. So um, that's just the kind of the uh, just the perspective for the community is that we want you guys to see much like on Kopi Cafe, it's a regular cadence once a week, you guys get to find out things we have in mind, things we're working on, things that we might be struggling with, uh, meeting new team members, uh, all sorts of stuff that we do on Kopi Cafe. Same uh, here will come with the um, game build uh, cadence as well. So 
that's exciting. I'm, I'm excited to have you talk about this next one coming out. So yeah, just go ahead and let us know what your thoughts are on build. Well, I don't know the release number, but yeah. So off of what you said there, we're, you know, we, we kind of started with biweekly builds and now we're on these monthly builds and every time we do a build, actually it's, it's does take some time out of production. We have to, everybody's going to test things. We've got to pull things out of there that are broken and don't work right now that are currently being worked on to make sure they don't go into the current release. So that's why things have kind of moved to monthly now because it's, uh, it's, it's a lot easier on the development team and you guys out there also tend to get a little bit more updates that way than just, you know, nobody wants to see just bi-weekly, hey, there were some graphical updates. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not very interesting. So this build coming up, which should be February 2nd, so that's, that's next week, um, so a Friday as usual. Um, it's not going to be as big as the last one. Uh, there was a lot of things that's going on right now that's leading up to the land rush that we have. Uh, some new areas you'll be able to go visit in the future in the game. So maybe getting away from Kalido a little bit. And of course, the avatar creator. So there's a lot of resources going into all of those mm -hmm. things that's that's coming up through the spring. And um, that's why this build's going to be a little bit smaller. And what's what's in that build? I don't think it's small. I mean, we do have the F9R. You'll see that in the racing menu. There might be a chance that a few of you are going to be able to drive the F9R for a limited time. A limited time. So uh, we'll announce. <laughs> we'll yeah, announce that's a big leap. Be, That'll be uh, huge. And I, I would yeah. hope that we can allow them to uh, screen capture some of these just, just to help get a, a little hype about the F9R going out there yep. before we start the sale. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, so that's quick demo drive, probably on that limited amount of time. The Bonanza, Bubble Jet Bonanza will be on demo drive for a month. So everyone will be able to drive the Bonanza. Um, I'm not sure we might still have the Astro in as well. We might just leave that on demo drive for now. So definitely well, explain, quite... ex explain the concept of demo drive. Yeah, it's just a limited amount of time. You can try something uh, that you don't own. So we might see a lot more of those uh, in the future. So, yeah. So you're going to take the Astro order. off, did you say? No, I don't think so. I think we're going to leave the Astro in there. You're just going to get the Bonanza as an addition this time. So more right. variety to race with. And the F9R, I tell you, I've taken it around some tracks and it's 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 something else. <laughs> so, yes, okay, class, this is well, just yeah, not yeah. fair. I want to play with the new toy. Yeah, it's too. it's it's very cool. So, uh, well, it's incredibly very, very... sexy. Like you know, everybody for for those of you that uh, haven't seen it yet, it's it's remarkable looking. Maybe uh, Callum can add a, a picture of it in the um, uh, post editing of Kopi Cafe. But they are in the pavilion area the new pavilion area that was included in the last re release when you, as soon as you get off the elevators, they're, they're right there. Uh, and I think they're amazing looking. So. Yeah. So we got, we got, that's tough. Uh, another addition is you're going to see rumble ball added to the Cleto resort area. So that's going to be in a place there. Um, and you know, that'll give you guys a little something else to do um, as well as the pavilion. So that's so another, another yeah, yeah. venue, two spots. Yeah. Very yeah, cool. we look at, like I said before, we look at Rumble Ball as kind of like this franchise that you'll see across the world that pops up in places like McDonald's does. And, you know, you can use it to play a little bit of football or soccer. So, yeah. Nice. But that's, uh, I think that's it. There are a few graphical updates, some bug fixes, uh, so a little bit of performance improvements that are in this one, but uh, a little bit smaller in last release. But I still think it's something to be excited about. I, so I also know this. Go on, Josh. Oh, uh, when you say performance improvements, uh, give give some context to what you typically mean by that. Um, higher frame rate. So uh, definitely. So going into the sectors that people are going to be in in the fairly near future, there's been some breakthroughs in um, kind of the foliage workflows and whatnot to increase performance. Um, I would say we can have a lot more dense forest now. We can have a lot more detail on trees. Uh, so 
you'll even see a few updates there in the Glimpse of Solas area uh, that you go into in the resort with this one. So um, it probably won't be that noticeable there, but definitely in the larger sectors where it's just this insanely huge landmass, it, it makes a big difference for us. And a good reason for having better performance is, you know, people can have a better time playing the game and people with weaker PCs can play the game. Yeah. So, well, yeah. well, I don't want to take too much time on that, but this brings to mind a significant point. And I know Rob had something else there. So I'm going to kick it over to Rob in a sec here. But the <clears throat> performance, something that we don't emphasize enough. And, uh, you know, I've heard it from you a few times, but to be an MMO, multiplayer game, that has the level of graphics that we have a part of that is a testament of unreal engine five and the power that that has brought us. Uh, but you know, there's not many that are delivering graphics on this level that are also an MMO and that's not to toot our own horn, so to speak, but it's more of that. There were only so many that were even able to utilize unreal engine five, but do you have any context to add to that? Cause this is a huge point that, what we're able to do because of the timing uh, with Unreal Engine 5 and, and more than that, also the team and your skills, et cetera. But go ahead. Yeah, it's, you know, we we use all those next gen features where DirectX 12, uh, we don't have an, an earlier version of our game that's running the Direct LS DirectX 11 stuff and, you know, more built in UE4. We don't, we don't have that. We go full future on things. So even right now, uh, so if you look at what's going on in the industry, there's a lot of UE5 games that are starting to poke their heads out. People are getting the chance to play them. A lot of them are not great uh, when it comes to performance. It's, it's kind of a tough engine if you want to use all those DirectX 12 features um, to nail down, but we've spent a ridiculous amount of time, uh, iterating on a lot of our workflows, not only to make it quick to build a lot of environments, uh, but to also make it performant, uh, for machines that are running it. So there's, um, you'll see this stuff get updated over time, but I, you know, I was even playing Fortnite like a week ago and we're, we're doing better than them on their DirectX 12 setting. And I'm like, Epic, this is your own engine. Why are we beating you at this? <laughs> so it's kind of exciting there, but we're pretty happy with where we are at and it's it's only going to improve. It's just yeah. uh, it's a bit of an enigma sometimes with UE5. I don't know what we're at the moment. We're going through kind of like our 90 day and 180 day plan. Mm -hmm. and, and on that in the future, we did talk about the NVIDIA um, DLSS and the AMD FSR. So it's not nothing yeah. we're on at the moment, but it is planned. Yep. So we're, we're going to see if that's something that's also going to help, um, you know, want as many people to play as possible. Right. But the balance is you also don't want cornucopias to look old and out of date in five years. You know, mm -hmm. you, you want it to be future proof. So there's, there's a balance there, but I think it, I think it'll certainly help. All right. All right, Rob, was that what you wanted to chime in with a minute well, ago? Well, yeah, it, actually, David touched on it. You're talking about, you know, forest and stuff like that. I was, I, I was. Um, th there's two other updates that I know is happening. Is I know we've we've also been able to reproduce the the bug that we had with the launcher. So we're hoping that on the next release, when you download it, those people that did have issues deleting it and re-downloading it, that hopefully should be fixed. But yeah, the the internal team does have you know scruffy and Ant and, and the team they they now are running around in solace one so so they are they're actively testing the, the the bugs so we're getting closer very close to um releasing solace one to to some of our public testers very soon any timelines on that no timeline right now <laughs> <laughs> so it just there's a lot going into this land rush thing, so we'll we'll see. We'll keep you updated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very exciting. Okay, last up before we get to some questions that uh, David's kind of gathered from the community is the node sale. So, Ethereum node sale tier two is coming, and we're targeting February 9th. That is our first cross chain cross chain nft endeavor and so we're just trying to make sure before we 
bring in a new chain with NFTs that the tech and everything it's uh, sturdy and everything's foolproof and, and solid. And um, uh, so we're, we're in those final phases with that. Uh, but Cardano has been paused because we didn't want one tier to get too far ahead. And we're on tier five. The first four tiers have sold out on Cardano and the first one on ETH uh, has sold out as that was a private sale. Um, so, you know, we'd like to hear from you guys. If you're still fired up about the node sale and, and looking to get in, throw something in the comments for us. We want to hear uh, how excited you guys are while we're on a temporary pause. Um, but uh, yeah, these are going to be a huge help to the infrastructure of Cornucopius and um, and a step towards decentralization. And there's a lot that we get to do in this with this in the future. Uh, but yeah, you get to uh, add value to what we're building and get rewarded for it, but it and, and improve the uh, user experience, the gamers that are coming on and downloading, uh, removing the single point of failure, speeding up the download speed time, all all that good stuff. Uh, Rob, did you have anything else you want to add there on the nodes? No, I think you covered it right quite 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 well. Yeah, Rob, I expect to see comments from you in there because you are ready for these node sales. I mean, I, I'll be the first one to comment this one. <laughs> you probably will. All right. If you beat Rob, props to you. Props. <laughs> All right. It kind of makes me want to try. Okay, David, we got questions. We're up. You're you're up. It's it's your part of the show now. Let's take it away. Yeah. yeah so instead of doing what I had I had done on a previous episode, taking specific user questions and trying to get very specific answers, I looked at a whole lot of questions, questions that we have missed, questions that are recent and kind of tried to boil those down into larger, more general questions that might answer even more questions. So uh, this might be a segment that I'm I'm on here and do more often. This more focuses on the game specifically, but just calling it interesting questions and even more interesting answers. So um, got a couple of these Very and good. I've written notes. So, uh, so first question. Where is Cornucopius and how big is the total game world of Cornucopius? So Cornucopius is technically in another dimension and a multiverse version of Earth. Like there could be thousands of millions of these, but it's it's in a very specific one that is different from ours. It is centered over the mid-Atlantic ridge on Earth. Uh, the global map of Cornucopius uh, is a circular area that is... It's about 1,200 kilometers across. Uh, that's not totally determined yet, but that means that you have a full area, free fly area of about a million square kilometers. So that's absolutely mind-blowingly huge. So, um, so you build a free fly around there. And of course, within that, you have all the sectors that allow you to land, go in there, enjoy the theme zones and other various things on foot, which are also quite huge. You know, those are eight by eight kilometers. So that kind of gives you an idea of where Cornucopius is. Um, you know, and I did mention the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's over the Atlantic, something has happened to the world, obviously. The seabed is dry. And can you also think about all the interesting things that are on the bottom of the ocean? I used to sit there as a kid and think about that when I was at the beach. I'm like, what if I could just drain this ocean and walk on the ocean floor and just go look around and see what's there? You find all that kinds of like things. your mind. <laughs> it's just one of those things surely somebody you know what i used to think of is it. have you seen the movie abyss it made me start to think of those really deep is deep chasms in the yeah. ocean and what is at the bottom of that yep I don't know. it's there's so much the it's Besides. you know we want to go to mars and whatnot but the ocean floor is the most unexplored thing we know more about mars than we know about our own ocean floor it's absolutely crazy well don't and give so, elon any ideas yeah, my, right? my head's always been in the clouds i'm afraid <laughs> yeah. it's a good place to be so um on to the next question will there be open world pvp uh for those of you that don't know what that is that's a player killing another player so uh so the answer to that is yes and no but yes so um major hubs Wait, cities so did you just say yes and no but yes yes and no but yes so it's you know, I'll explain. So major hubs, cities, towns, properties, uh, they're going to have spheres of influence in the way of a protective bubble 
for players uh, where you can't be bothered or attacked by players. Uh, but the wilderness areas are mostly open PvP. And then that doesn't mean that, oh, I need to stay on my land plot and not go out there because I could get killed. There will be consequences for people that go around indiscriminately just, you know, killing other players. So uh, you do something like that, you're going to be hunted down, you're going to be neutralized and are likely going to find yourself in an unpleasant place for some time. So, uh, well, that's, <laughs> yeah, you can only imagine what that might be, but All right. we'll, we'll get to that at a later date. So um, will there be RPG like classes? So no, not really. Uh, you'll likely get some early starts in choosing skill paths from the beginning, but you aren't locked into like a traditional RPG style class where you're kind of stuck there. You can always change directions, research other paths, go a different way. So hopefully that I've seen a lot of questions about stuff like this. Hopefully that answers it a little bit and we'll get into some more detail uh, with that in the future. All right. What will... What will happen to NPC preset characters once the avatar creator is out? Well, they're not going away. Uh, they'll still be there as presets, a starting point for your avatar creation. You can uh, start with your favorite one and modify from there, or you can start from the complete basics and, of course, build up from there. So um, what we're going to be at using these NPCs, the presets for is also in our crowd system. They're also going to be a part of quest as well. Um, the crowd system is something we've had, but nobody's seen yet because it's dependent on our avatar system getting finished up. So NPCs aren't going anywhere. If you like Wendy, if that's your thing, then start with Wendy, make some modifications and you can continue from there. So it's just a, it's just a starting point and you'll see them around the world too. All right, got a few, just a few questions left. So hopefully we have enough time here. When GTI Jester sale? When are, when are you going to get your hands on an X-Class vehicle? Um, I responded to somebody before on this in the, uh, in the, in Discord, and I said one does not simply purchase a Jester. So there are certain things in the game that we have to leave for skillful players to earn. So um, vehicles of those levels will be rewarded to players that have the skills. Um, is it possible to eventually purchase one on a secondary market? Yes, possibly yes. But that's if one of those skillful players is willing to part with one. <laughs> so it's there you go. That's my answer on things like the GTI Jester. Subject to change, but that's that's the way it is right now. So, any, I don't know if you guys had. I didn't want to keep talking. If you guys, no, no, that's great. Uh, uh, I'm excited to earn my Jester. Yeah, just like everyone else. Um, this is a kind of a big one. How hard well, is not it a big be one. to earn my Jester? That's what I want. <laughs> well, to. it's like Formula One in the real world. The best of the best is is the people who will get the jesters so that's uh you know you better get to racing <laughs> oh crap so yeah they're practicing true but yeah. all right on to i think i have two more three more questions so help the game is so dark we see this a little bit in discord so yes the game is dark for some people um that's based on your specific monitor or your monitor settings we haven't put a gamma slider in yet on the game, but it is coming in the future. Um, with that being said, though, nighttime is intended to be dark in this game. There, There is a utility for flashlights and torches. We do rely on our sort of real life understanding of, of dark and light. So it's, it's not going to be like a lot of MMOs when you go outside and it's absolutely beautiful and as bright as daylight at night, but it's a slightly bluish hue. It's not going to be that way. It's actually going to be dark and you're going to, there's, there's a lot of survival aspect to cornucopias. So you will have to take care of that. But the issue with, you know, there's a lot of people out there that may not realize their monitor is altering what they're seeing from the original signal, special contrast modes. Usually what that's doing is actually just squashing your picture is what it's doing. It's making it kind of look better, but you're, use, you're losing light detail. You might want to look at your monitor settings for now. Make sure they're not in any special modes. Keep it on a standard mode to help with that darkness until we have a gamma slider that everyone can adjust and you know make sure they can see everything in the game. 
Are there, uh, is there going to be snipe hunting at night? Snipe hunting? So you're just out there and somebody takes you out with a sniper rifle? Um, <laughs> no, I think it's a, <laughs> I think it's a, a, a fictional myth based, um, hunting joke that the adults used to play oh. on us and in, in Texas, uh, us kids in, in Texas. I don't know if it's a, oh. it's, it's not a real thing. <laughs> Uh, snipe hunting when i heard that i was like oh some guy's gonna take you out from afar in the forest tonight. Yeah. i mean it's probably gonna happen <laughs> no so. was it, was that it question wise uh i have two more uh, two making more. pretty okay. quick so when public play um so i've i've had a few questions about this you'll likely start seeing this at points this year uh, where we open it up for a very limited amount of times. Uh, what's going on currently, though, is our network and back end and infrastructure is going through a phase of upgrades. So we want that to get done first. After that's done and tested and good, then we'll have a more updated infrastructure that could take a flood of people if we open up a free weekend or a week or something like that. But yeah, and to, to add to that, Technically speaking, in, in, in some ways, we are already public play because if you own an NFT and you have, if you own a cornucopious land NFT or a vehicle NFT and you have a graphics card that's 3060 or above and you collect your, connect your player account, then you should be able to download uh, the launcher and then the game and, and start playing. That being said, we are going to be a free to play games. This is just the NFT is currently giving you early access, which is a lot of fun. So if you want to get in and play, go get a cornucopious NFT, uh, create your player account. As long as you have a 3060 or above graphics card, you should yep. be good to go. All right. All right. Um, I did lie. I actually have two more. <laughs> this Wait, is what? what I have. I have two more, two okay. more things to answer. And then I promise I'll leave and I'll get out of here. <laughs> So, well, you're going to uh, be here for the leak as well. So it's, it's true. So um, another question I have answered this on here before is how is land plot rarity determined by developers? So the answer to that is it's not determined by developers. So it's determined by the landowners. Uh, we'll let mythic holders in first and naturally they will choose the best properties from the start, which can be based on many factors. So it's not up to the developers to decide that, does somebody, is that lakeside property mythic? Is it that one hanging off a mountain? Is it any of those? It's, we're going to leave it up to the landowners. Um, but it's, I think what we're going to see happen is it's going to be very similar to real life real estate where it's location, location, location. It's probably going to be based on views and, you know, how close you are to resources. So we'll, we'll see what people end up picking, but that's, that's how that's going to work. So, all right. Last one is, Kind of a big one. What is the major gameplay loop of Cornucopius? Is it a farming game? Is it just a farming game? So um, the major gameplay loop of Cornucopius is really the economy and player progression. So uh, it's Cornucopius is more of a digital existence. Um, I, I say this a lot. So it's a it's a go your own way situation. You want to, you know, you want to build yourself up if you want to build yourself up and get access to better and better things in the world, you're going to choose your own path, live it your own way. Um, Cornucopius will be as hardcore or as casual as you want to make it, whether that's being a farmer, trader, gun for hire, a botanist, a mechanic. Maybe you like to dabble in the quantum realm of things, quantum Fisherman. physics. A fisherman. Maybe, maybe you want to do a little bit of everything. Maybe you want to be an all-rounder. Try different things. The world... So, guys, the world is your oyster here, <laughs> essentially. It's it's up to Will you. Will there be oysters? <laughs> very very likely, yes. We haven't got to Will there yet. be worlds made of oysters? So, <laughs> I don't know about that. So, um, but it's... You know, to finish what I was saying, it's really up to you what you want to do with Cornucopius. Um, there is kind of a call to action in the game. So Cornucopius needs your help. You have been brought into its realm for a reason. And whether you want to answer that call, help, or hurt it is entirely up to you. Uh, in Cornucopius, you aren't really role-playing uh, as a character with a set path. 
you are your character. You go do you, be yourself, be whatever you want. That's that's what Cornucopius is really about. It's up to you what you really want to do. Spend some time in America. Name that there song you in the YouTube comments. All right. Uh, let's get Look the leak up here. So we've got something somewhere. Here we go. What leak. is this? Yeah. Whoa. Oh, I have no idea what that is. Oh, shoot. Guess is it's it? A, it's a vacuum cleaner. No. Is it it's something for gerbils? It's a microwave. <laughs> it's an automated gerbil running machine. Could be. Very well. Is it one be. of those things that flattens tarmac on the road? Oh, mm. could be. Yeah. It, it is something that goes on your wrist. So that, that might roll that out. Is it a shirt? No, no, it can't be. A what? Go a shed? on your wrist. Is it a watch? You know, it's it's kind of like a watch in a way, in the way that it goes on your wrist. So, is it for sale? Yeah. No, it's not for sale. All it's right. Got a, so, it's got an it's aerial like, on it and some dials. Yeah. So that that is a land plot scanner device. So that's exactly what that is. So when you go into sec oh, sectors so. like. Solus, and you want to be able to see where the plots are, what size they are. This is a device that you'll use to scan for it. So you'll be able to go around, scan for plots within a certain radius, do some prospecting, kind of looking around, deciding maybe what you want to pick out of those plots. So I think it's going to be a very exciting time for people to be in the world. I see people streaming this quite a bit, them going around and looking for plots. Uh, it's it's going to be crazy times, but that is a uh, that's a plot scanner. So there you go. Yeah, I am fired up to uh, utilize the land plot scanner. This is one of the most exciting things that I think that we have coming this year um, with with our land plot selection. I don't know mm -hmm. that it's been done to this extent uh, by many what we're doing with our land and and the the ability to own it and be the single owner of a property there's not a ton of projects that have effectively pulled that off in an mmo uh yet so yeah no uh, totally it's like one thing you're getting with our land plots this isn't some procedural layout that a that you know a program has just laid them down every single plot is laid down hand laid down by a developer so yeah. um, you're getting a unique property uh, in a unique and beautiful world. And that's, yeah. that device is going to help you find what tickles your fancy. So, <laughs> so, so you activate the device and then what, a, a hologram or pops up or yeah. something? That's it. So it activates the interface and you'll be able to see the plots that you have within range and a holographic view of the where that plot sits and its size all of that so very it's gonna be very exciting. nice and you get cable on it i think so so oh. it's that's comes at a later date but sure. i'm imagining tons of utility for this device yeah. but we can we can get into the utility speculation later for now it's land plot scanner i love it um very exciting and uh maybe there's more utility in the future we don't know yet but uh that's that's fun. And that that pretty much wraps it up for Kopi Cafe episode 78. So, David, thanks for joining us for the full episode. That was fun. Good to have yeah. you on. And uh, we got to jump to our 90-day planning meeting. So for those of you uh, still with us, thank you for watching. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Break it down loud. You say I'm in a game all day, game all day long. Walk with the doctor, say, play it till the sun goes away. Ay, 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 ay. Faster than a torpedo, running through Kalido, fight like a mosquito. Yeah. Oh, you better stop, Jack, coming for me. I'm the one on top, so it's funny to me. Cru cruising, cruising, I come for the V. When I ride with the coin, yeah, it's something to see. Where the sleek daddy, club riding, grow retro, my whole side of my.
time to go 